Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, Mr. Holliman, as uh, the chairman noted, uh, these are issues that he and I have worked together on uh, extensively. And I know you've already plowed some of the ground with regard to um, digital trade, cross-border data flows, things that uh, we have a great interest in. Um, I'd also like to maybe ask uh, this question in a slightly different way, but there's a suggestion that's come from um, some of our uh, other nations around the world in the wake of the NSA surveillance uh, disclosure that countries ought to attempt to create their own national or regional internet networks. And I'm just curious about your thoughts on, um, you know, with regard to keeping the internet as an open platform for business and information and education, uh, and, and how a regional network that treated U.S. companies different than other um, companies around the world and, and, uh, and websites within the network, uh, whether or not that would constitute a new um, form of trade barrier and uh, just kind of overall what your thoughts are with respect to that issue because that is something that is we hear being discussed by other countries. Uh, Senator Thune, um, I absolutely do believe um, that things like that can be significant barriers to trade um, and not only significant barriers to trade but they can really undermine the fundamental underpinnings of the cloud computing model and where we're headed. Um, I think efforts to fight against the balkanization of the cloud are good for users of the cloud because really the way the cloud works is through the collective efficiencies and cost savings that come through allowing data to be exchanged and, the, and really bringing low-cost computing capacity to both citizens here and in emerging economies, and that allows a level of innovation unlike anything we've been able to see because it really breaks through the barriers to cost. And for countries who want to break up the cloud, to balkanize the cloud, I think they are doing it for misguided reasons, one of which is I think that some countries believe that the economic value of the cloud ha is around hosting physical servers in their markets. We need to help them understand, as the U.S., that that's not the economic value of the cloud. And we also need to help them understand that this is not just a U.S. interest, but indeed it's for many emerging markets where small companies and entrepreneurs, if given the ability to use an unfettered cloud, will be able to grow and prosper. So I think we have to lead here. I think this is part of the digital trade agenda in T. TPP and TISA and TTIP and elsewhere, and if confirmed for this position, I uh, commit to working closely with you and with the chairman to make sure that this absolute imperative for the U.S. moves forward. That would be great. Uh, I, Chairman White and I, um, on the, the, the digital trade bill that we've introduced, is a design, I think, to, to really put additional focus and light on, as we negotiate these trade agreements, the importance of not having these types of protectionist barriers raised against American digital goods. And if you look at, um, there's enormous potential out there globally for American business and, and the, the opportunity for economic growth uh, on levels that uh, um, ought to make everybody interested in this issue. And it's one of the few areas in our economy where we actually run a trade surplus. You know, I mean, we, it's a net net has been a very good thing for, for our economy. And I hope that uh, uh, we will be able to be very clear um, in these negotiations that uh, this is an issue on which um, we cannot, uh, we can't give ground. I mean, we, we need to make sure that we keep this, uh, uh, this platform open. And uh, I hope that that will be a high priority for you and for your colleagues at uh, USTR. I, I want to shift gears for just a minute and talk a little bit about uh, another issue that's of great importance to me, and that's agriculture and how um, these trade agreements impact American farmers, and particularly uh, market access in Asia, which I know will be geographically under your portfolio. I know you have people that specialize uh, in agriculture, um, and that may not that may not be your specific area of interest. But I want to know if you could assure me and other members of the committee that you will insist on um, a TPP outcome that results in broad-based uh, tariff elimination, meaningful market access for um, our agricultural producers. You know, we, we see areas like um, Japan as a huge market opportunity. Uh, they historically have worked very hard to limit the discussion on agricultural issues to a very narrow range, and uh, I hope that uh, we can make this a, a, a very broad um, 
a based attempt at least to, to, to do away with a lot of these tariffs and other types of barriers that they erect to our products. Senator, I, I understand your keen interest in this. Um, we run a trade surplus in agricultural uh, products of about $40 billion a year. Um, the fastest growing market opportunities are in Asia, existing markets and the fastest growing. Uh, I think we have an opportunity, and I will commit to working with my colleagues at USTR uh, throughout the building to ensure that uh, whether it's through TPP or elsewhere that we, we provide comprehensive and meaningful market access uh, to agriculture markets, including Japan, in Japan and elsewhere, and that we look at the type of uh, SPS and other measures that are being used in some markets to try to block legitimate, uh, healthy and safe U.S. products from getting in those markets. And it's an important part of the economy today. It's an important part of the economy even more going forward. And uh, Asia is really a huge opportunity for us, and I commit to working with you on that. Well, I will look forward to continuing the dialogue on that. Um, and, you know, I would mention, I mentioned Japan, also China. China is the number one market for soybean exports, a uh, very fast-growing market for corn. They, um, they're not approving, at least in a timely way, new biotech traits, which is something that's uh, uh, very troubling and could have a significant negative impact on our trade relationship. And I hope that if confirmed, you'll work uh, with your counterparts in China to move expeditiously on the approval of um, agricultural biotech products that have already been approved in the U.S. for entry into the Chinese market. Uh, they, they have, um, on some of these issues, been... Uh, um, been very difficult to deal with of late, and of course that has a lot of implications for agricultural trade, which is, as you mentioned, is another area of our economy that's a real bright spot. We uh, globally have enormous opportunity through TTIP and TPP and, and uh, to, to really expand the reach of uh, American agriculture and to help feed the world, but in order to do that, we've got to get these new uh, technologies, uh, these new biotech traits uh, approved in uh, some of these countries. So. Um, we'll look forward to working with you on that, and I'll take your assurance that you will uh, press on those issues and make that a priority as, uh, as um, we'll take that as a reassurance that you'll be very engaged on those. So thank you. Absolutely. I appreciate that. Mr. Chairman, thank you.